What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us for our online service. We've got an amazing time planned for you, so whatever you're doing right now, hopefully you can just have a moment where you can connect with God. We're gonna sing some songs, we're gonna have a message, we're gonna do all of that. But right now, we just wanna invite you to focus on God. We're gonna sing some songs together, so let's go. to the way I work. Oh, I'm gonna live like the chains are gone.
thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to
that you've never failed us. Thank you, God, that you're so good. Thank you, God, that when we're walking around those walls that are in our lives, we're waiting for them to fall down, whether it's a wall between us and our family, or whether it's a wall that we feel in our lives somehow else, God, or whether maybe it's a wall that we feel between us and you. God, you are the one that lowers. You are the one that flattens those walls. God, we believe you can do it. So thank you for your goodness. And I pray that whoever's watching right now can feel your presence and understand a little bit more about who you are. Because God, you are so good. And what a sharp contrast that is to the world around us. So God, I pray that people would accept that truth. We pray and we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. We as a church have been in a series called Rent Free. Yeah. Talking about all those things that take place in our minds and in our hearts that uh, can often go unchecked. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we believe as a church is that our life is always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Oh, I love it. It's, Absolutely. Preach. Right? That's yeah. great. That's it, great. What are some of the lingering effects of COVID that maybe most people aren't even aware of, of how it's affecting them. Yeah, well, literally it's important to realize no one is unscathed. Hmm. That nobody's come through this in a way that hmm. they are not affected somehow. Yeah. And most people are finding like, why don't I, why can't I uh, do what I used to do? Yeah. Why does it take me an hour to craft an email? Why can I can I not hear my toddler while I'm making dinner? Why did I used to like people and I don't like people anymore? <laughs> like they're realizing like it's the, my energy's not there. I'm different somehow in small ways and large ways. And most people, it's sort of this like fatigue. Yeah, I see that that's what's happening is people have to. They're facing a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. a lot of depression. Yeah, uh, just go straight there. Okay, so here are some helpful definitions. Anger signals a blocked goal. Hmm. It's why when somebody cuts me off in traffic, I'm not sad. <laughs> yeah. Because anger signals like there's a goal yeah. that I wanted. I wanted my family to be this way. I wanted my life to be this way. I wanted my job to look this way. And something's in the way of that. So people are having a lot of anger because yeah. obviously all our goals have been blocked yeah. in many ways. Hmm. Um, depression signals an, un an unattainable goal. Hmm. I don't want change in my life. I don't want people to die. Uh, I want my marriage to be without conflict. Hmm. These are unattainable goals. Yeah. And anxiety hmm. signals uncertainty in the goals, okay? And this is what's going along with the pandemic is so much anxiety, like, do I want my life the way it was? I kind of do, but can I? I don't think I can. And it's just this like competing goals, if you will. Do you think most people are aware the answer to that really is depends on the person, hmm. depends on the context, depends on even the subculture that they're in. Yeah. But in general, oh yes. So in one sense, the stigma of going to a counselor or seeking those kinds of resources is waning yeah. because people are realizing like, okay, everyone is struggling right now. And it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. Yeah. How can they recognize when anger depression or anxiety is starting to creep up in their own lives. What are the common symptoms that start to come out with those? Well, not to be funny, but anxiety, depression. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> uh, so in terms of things like all of a sudden I'm sleeping a ton more. Okay. Or all of a sudden I can't sleep through the night and there's this time at night where I wake up and can't get back to sleep. Mm. Uh, I've had a sudden, <laughs> it's hard to distinguish since in COVID, but I've had a, I've had a sudden weight gain or weight mm. loss. Like, okay, things that are those kinds of things. But a big indicator is things that were enjoyable before. They're not doing it for me now. What, what do you think are just some of the common stigmas around mental health and seeking help for our mental and emotional well-being. Yeah, that you have to have a big problem hmm. 
to enter this world. They have to be really like, you know, mental. <laughs> yeah. You have to be really yeah. like messed up. And yeah. the reality is that I found over the years uh, that counseling is like kind of one of three things. Mm. Counseling can be an ICU for sure. Sure. Counseling can also be like PT, you know, mm. just to strengthen weak areas or areas that have been injured like yeah. PT. Counseling can also be like a gym. Mm. Okay. We all know mm. gym memberships. Nobody needs one to be healthy. Mm. Nobody. But why do they proliferate? Well, because you know that there's going to be a certain time and place and somebody's you're paying money for it and somebody's going to be there. And so counseling can be any of those. Mm. And I have found that it's the second and third paradigms of the PT and the gym that are like, yeah, they're destigmatizing it for people. I, I actually have a bunch of clients right now that are proactive. They're just coming mm. because I see mostly people in ministry. They want to have longevity in ministry. And they're like, I want to get ahead of it. I see everybody else burning out. I want to try to get ahead of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the the stigmas, at least historically in the Christian faith, is that sometimes when you need to seek help for our mental and emotional health, it's almost like you don't have enough faith, which is a ridiculous thing to mm -hmm. believe. So I'm just curious, how do you see our faith being very much a part of why we would seek help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, because we, you know, the life of faith trusts God, mm -hmm. and he's pretty clear about seeking wisdom outside of ourselves is yeah. a, a good way to live. Think yeah. about the Proverbs. Proverbs 3 talks about, um, do not be wise in your own eyes. Mm. Trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. So many areas in the yeah. Proverbs alone talk about like, listen, wisdom is found yeah. outside of ourselves, mm. not within ourselves. That's a great point. I mean, that's really that's really what we're trying to hit on very much in our rent free series is our thought life mm -hmm. and how we change that. Do you have any like good tips about our minds, our, our thinking? Mm -hmm. Psalm 51 6 says, You desire truth in the inward parts, wisdom mm -hmm. in the inmost place. There's a certain sense in which a secondary translation of the NIV, Proverbs 23 7, says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if I believe deep down inside, like I have self hatred there, so I will be, right? But if mm -hmm. I believe inside the truths of God that. No, he created me for his purposes. He crafted me the way he wants. Ephesians 2.10, I'm his workmanship. Like, that's what'll come out. We become what we expose ourselves to. I think yeah. that's a common understanding. Yeah. And so the more that we just inculcate the word of God, the more than we take on those characteristics. I mean, God's pretty clear about that. So yeah. journaling is good. Talking with people who love God's word is good. Being around the community of God is good. Yeah. 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 So, so that self-talk. Huge. Is important. So probably a, a part of that process of being able to change those thought patterns is not just keeping them inside here, but actually verbalizing. Would you say that's an important I part mean, of that process? Don't get me started. It's huge because how did God create all that is? He spoke it into existence. Yeah. That means we, as his image bearers, have an incredible shaping power to our speech. I mean, I... <laughs> Our words have power. So much, so much. I mean, Proverbs, what is it, 18, 21? I don't know. Uh, I think that's it. It says the power of life and death is in the tongue. And that's the, that's the great thing about God's word. We don't have to come up with our own self-talk. We just have to learn to take on what God's already spoken to yeah, us and allow that, that to become our self-talk. Well, thank you, Tammy. This has been incredibly helpful for our church. Um, would you just have any uh, parting encouragement, uh, words of wisdom for us that you'd like to share with us today? 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they yeah. cannot see the light of the knowledge of Christ. Mm. Okay, that is so huge for us that there's a small G God of this age. Yeah. Think about how much of our culture is built on creating discontentment. Mm. Like... Social media, malls, everything, commercials, ad campaigns, yep. they're all built on don't like what you have so you can, I mean, capitalism itself is built upon engendering discontentment so that our minds will go somewhere else. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we take every thought captive to make it obedient to the knowledge of Christ. So I think it's important for us to realize, oh, there's a spiritual component to mental health and everything, all of my health. In addition to the insidious cultural influences, there's also a direct assault on our faith in the spiritual realm. Yes, sir. And that is what is hard and weird for some people to figure out, but it's very pragmatic for us. Ephesians 6, 6 12 says, our battle's not against flesh and blood, 
Yeah. But against the powers and principalities and forces of darkness in the unseen spiritual places. You know, we're spirit. C.S. Lewis, it's accredited to him. I don't know if it actually is him, said, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. And in that space of the soul, in that space of the spirit, there is an anti-God force regularly looking to do what 1 Peter 5, 8 says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And it's not your person mm -hmm. that evil's looking to devour. It's your faith. This mm -hmm. all plays in significantly to mental health, mm -hmm. significantly to emotional health. Don't forget, you have an enemy to your faith. Don't misinterpret it. It's not because you are not truly a believer. It's not because God is not truly good to you. It's not because your faith is weak. It's because you have an enemy that is looking to, in the space of your spirit, mm -hmm. to come against the goodness of God in you, to come against any mental stability, any mental fortitude, any mental strength, mm -hmm. by lying to you on the regular about yourself, about God, about this world, about others. So don't forget that aspect yeah. as well, I think. That was a great word. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you for letting me share yeah. it. Thanks again, Tammy, for being yeah. with us. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Hello, New Point. I want to welcome all of you at our campuses as well as those of you who are joining us online. We've been in this series called Rent Free, and today we're wrapping it up. And what we're talking about is this. What are you allowing to live rent free in your mind? Because here's what we've learned. Your life, my life, our life are moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And so your thoughts are very, very, very important. Matter of fact, they're more powerful than what you and I realize. Now, as I said at the beginning of this series, I'm not a doctor, okay, in any way, shape, or form. And so what we're trying to do is lay the foundation of who Jesus Christ is and what he has for you and for me. So it's okay not to be okay, all right? And if you're in therapy, if you're taking some medication to be able to help you move along, hey, you know what? Don't be ashamed of that. You know, we, we all have our battles. We all have our challenges. And we just want you to know that we want you to understand that God is for you and not against you. And we want to be a church that helps people to lay the foundation for a life that is full of Freedom and peace and joy. And that all begins with the person of Jesus Christ. So if you're in, in, in uh, medical help, that's fine, all right? Continue, okay? Listen to your doctor. If, if you're struggling right now and maybe you haven't gone that route, I want to encourage you to talk to your campus pastor if you don't know where to start because we want to help you. We are mind, body, and spirit, and we want to be able to take care of all of that. Now, here's what we're learning about our minds. Our minds is a battlefield. It's a battlefield. And most of life's battles are going to be fought between your ears. In other words, much of life, okay, that you and I know and experience is a result of what happens between our ears, really our thoughts. Now, you and I can have insecure thoughts, we can have fearful thoughts, we can have negative thoughts, we can have impure thoughts. And what we need to do is we need to deal with those thoughts because they can be debilitating in your life and in my life. They can lead us down a destructive path because how you think and how I think dictates how we live. Now, I know without a doubt, I have a strong conviction that the biggest problem that you and I deal with, matter of fact, the most important problem that you and I deal with is how do we manage our thoughts? Because they come at us in unbelievable ways. They come at us fast. And I just want to tell you that there's hope for you and me. This has been going on since the fall of mankind. And Paul gives us the way in which we can manage our thoughts. There's, there's a pathway. There's an answer for you and me. And Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians. We've looked at this verse 
throughout this series, he says, for though we walk in the world, we do not fight according to this world's rules of warfare. The weapons of the war we're fighting are not of this world, but are powered by God and effective Check this out, okay, at tearing down strongholds, that's a perceived way of of seeing life and thinking about life, erected against his truth, we are demolishing arguments and ideas, imaginations, okay, our imaginations can run wild, all right, and every high and mighty philosophy that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God. We're taking prisoners or we're taking captive every thought, every emotion and subduing them into obedience to the anointed one. And that anointed one is Jesus. Because here's what we believe. This is the foundation. Jesus makes life better. And what does he do? He makes us better at life. And so we wanna take all of our thoughts captive and we want to give them to him because he's the way the truth and the life and so how do you and I live out this verse how do you and I learn how to manage our mind and why is it so important that you and I manage our mind let me give you some reasons okay we manage our mind because your thoughts control your life your thoughts control your life I've said this a hundred times You and I cannot act inconsistently with how we think. And so that's why your mind, that's why my mind is a battle zone. Proverbs says it like this, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts, negative thoughts, okay? Impure thoughts, fearful thoughts. That's why we wanna take them captive. So your thoughts have tremendous ability to shape your life, either for a a positive way or a negative way. You know, maybe growing up you heard some things. You're worthless, you won't uh, 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 be anything in life. You don't matter. And what happens is, for some of us, that has lodged in our mind and it's shaped you. Well, what I wanna tell you is take that thought captive and pin it against Jesus. And Jesus would say, you do matter. You are of value. And so we have to realize that our mind, okay, is a place of where thoughts come together and they are powerful. We need to manage them. Here's the second one. And that is the mind is a battleground for sin. The mind, your mind and my mind is a battleground for sin. All temptation happens first in your mind, in my mind. It's conceived in my mind. I first have a thought. And then what happens is if I don't take it captive, if I don't manage it, then what happens is I nurture it and it grows. And as we're gonna find out, then it becomes a behavior in our life. And so your mind is the battleground for sin, okay? Look at what... uh, Paul writes, he says, I love to do God's will so far as my new nature is concerned. But there is something else deep within me, in my lower nature, that is at war with my what? My mind, those thoughts, okay? And wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. In my mind, I want to do God's will. I want to be God's willing servant. But instead, I find myself enslaved to sin, And so your mind is the battleground for sin. Now why we want to be able to deal with this is because sin leads to death. Sin leads to death. And so one of the reasons why you and I get mentally fatigued is because there's a battle going on in your mind 24-7, 365. And it's debilitating because it's intense. And it's intense because your mind is your greatest asset. It all happens in your mind. And so the enemy knows that. The enemy realizes that. And so he's going to come after you. He's going to tempt you to do things that will wreck your marriage, that will wreck your relationship with your kids, that that will bring you to ruins. And so we have to capture those thoughts and not dwell on those thoughts. And then here's the third one. The mind produces peace and contentment. Life doesn't. Okay, circumstances doesn't, (laughs) possessions don't, it's your mind, it's your mind. Your mind produces peace and contentment. 
You see, an unmanaged mind leads to tension. A managed mind leads to tranquility. An unmanaged mind leads to conflict. A managed mind leads to confidence. An unmanaged mind leads to stress. And when you don't control your thoughts, when you don't control your mind, when you don't direct your thoughts, you will have an enormous amount of stress in your life. You'll have an enormous amount of anxiety in your life. You'll have an enormous amount of fear. But when you manage your mind, guess what? And you capture those thoughts as Paul was talking about, it leads to strength, security, stability, and serenity. You see, look at what Paul says. He says, letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to what? Death. That's where sin begins to be activated. But letting the Spirit control your mind, that's God, that's Jesus, leads to what? Life and peace. Wow. And so we need to manage our mind because your thoughts are powerful. We need to manage our mind because it's in the mind that the battle is, is waged about sin. We need to be able to manage our mind because it's there that produces peace and contentment. And so here's the key to mental health, all right? Here's the key to renting, uh, rent free, okay? Mental health 101, focus on what you can control. Control the controllables. You can't control what happens to you, but you and I can control how we respond. And how you and I respond by taking every thought captive greatly influences the outcome in our life. Let me give you an example, okay? The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, and Timothy was, was in a situation that was very stressful, high anxiety. Matter of fact, Nero was in charge, and he was persecuting believers everywhere. And at this time, I mean, he was just, he was burning. He, he was setting ablaze believers who trusted in Jesus Christ. And Timothy was a pastor at the church at Ephesus, and he knew that, that, that Nero was on the lookout for him. Matter of fact, he probably had spies. He probably had police looking for him because he knew of the work that Timothy was doing. And Timothy was becoming very, very fearful. Who wouldn't? I would, okay? If Nero was running after me, chasing after me, knowing that he was hunting me down, and Paul knew that there were threats against Timothy's life, and that a spirit of fear wanted to grab a hold of him and fill him with anxiety, with worry, and with fear. And so Paul writes this note to Timothy on managing his thoughts. Here's what he says. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal, check this out, personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Wow. Wow. He was saying, hey, Timothy, I understand that Nero's chasing you. I understand that, that humanly speaking, fear wants to grab a hold of you and the enemy wants to uh, 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 capture you with his fear. But I'm telling you, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. God is in control. He's greater than anything and everything that you're facing. He's given you a sound mind, okay, a sound mind. And so what I've done is I've just kind of reworked 2 Timothy 1, 7, and, and here's how I have it, okay? God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. He has given you a mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, protected, and brought into a place of safety and security so that it is no longer affected. Check this out. So it is no longer affected by illogical, unfounded, and absurd thoughts. See, that's where anxiety comes from. Anxiety comes from illogical, unfounded, and absurd thoughts. God doesn't love me. I'm not valuable. I'm not enough. And what Paul was telling Timothy is, you know what? God didn't give you that. He didn't give you a spirit of fear. He gives you a, a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. 
So what do you do when the devil tries to convince you that you're not enough? What do you do when the devil tries to convince you when you're losing your mind? What do you do when you're confused because all hell is breaking out in your life and you're tempted to be filled with fear? You remember that you have a sound mind and you develop that and you nurture that. And so the question becomes, how do I develop? How do I nurture? How do I continue to live out this sound mind, okay, that Jesus has given me that's no longer affected by illogical, unfounded, and absurd thoughts, okay? Now, this isn't magic. It's really a process. I want to give it to you, okay? It's this right here. First of all, your focus, your focus. How do you develop a, a sound mind? You choose what you focus on. Everything that gets your attention doesn't deserve your attention. And so you need to understand that. Because what you focus on, guess what you do? You talk about. You talk about. You talk about whatever you focus on. What I choose to give my attention to and focus on is what I'm going to be talking about. And yet what happens is your mind cannot comprehensively see, so it selectively sees. So you get to choose what you focus on, but whatever you focus on, you're going to talk about, which leads us to what? Feelings. Feelings. It responds, okay, to whatever you're focusing on. Whatever you focus on, whatever you talk to yourself about, okay, what happens is it begins to affect your emotions and you begin to talk to yourself about what you see. And you talk to yourself more than anyone else. And then what happens is action. Now what happens is you're driven by this emotion. You're driven by this feeling that you have. And emotion is not a result of a situation. Emotion is what you focus on, the situation. You see, the emotion is the ability to act, and your emotions come not from circumstances, okay? What happens is it comes from what you focus on. You see, fear is the emotion to move away from something. Affection is the emotion to move towards something. Sadness is the emotion to sulk and do nothing. And so when I feel emotions in my body, I need to ask myself, what is driving my emotions, what is driving my feelings? What am I saying to myself? What am I focusing on? And so what happens is you need to be able to develop a sound mind by choosing what you focus on, your self-talk, feelings that leads to action. Now, Paul says that God has given us a spirit of discipline. And so a, a, a sound mind comes from you and I living out a disciplined life. Let me show you. A sound mind is disciplined focus, disciplined self-talk, disciplined emotions, and disciplined action. What is an unsound mind? Let me give you an unsound mind. Unsound mind is unfocused. Your mind's unfocused. You're just letting everything, you're not managing your mind. You're just letting everything come in, all right? You have negative talk about all of that. You have counterproductive emotions. Okay, you end up acting and behaving in ways that you don't want, okay, which leads to ineffective behavior. And so what happens is this, you and I are called to have a sound mind. We can have that in Jesus Christ, and that sound mind comes through discipline, the Holy Spirit empowering you, equipping you, filling you to be able to do the right thing, because a sound mind is a trained mind, okay, and what happens is when you become aware of your emotions that are not good, then what happens is you begin to ask yourself, so what am I focusing on? What am I saying to myself? And so if you want to identify, okay, your thoughts of why you're thinking the way that you're thinking, why you're doing the, the things that you're doing, you've got to simply go back and ask, why am I feeling this way? What am I telling myself? Why do I keep telling myself these negative things? Where's my mind? Where's my focus? And what happens is you can interrupt and you can make a change and you can go back and say, you know what? I'm going to focus on that which is good. I'm going to focus on that which is right. I'm going to fill my mind with that which is positive. I'm going to fill my mind with those things that Jesus 
would want me to. And I'm gonna talk about that. And what happens is it impacts your emotions, it impacts your feelings, which leads you to be able to do the right thing. So guess what? You have a choice in all of this. God's not made you a robot, he's not made me a robot. He said, Dwight, you get to choose what you focus on and whatever you focus on, you're gonna talk about. And whatever you talk about, it's gonna affect your feelings. And whatever you, affects your feelings, guess what? You're gonna act on. And I want you to listen to my voice. And so you and I can act in a disciplined way or a default way. I can talk to myself intentionally, the way in which God sees me, I'm valuable, I'm enough, I'm more than a conqueror, I'm precious, I'm treasured, or I can allow the devil, the enemy, to lie to me and say you're worthless, you're helpless, you're unlovable. And what happens is I will be allowing things to live in my mind rent free. So let me close with this. Manage your thoughts because your thoughts, your strongest thoughts is where your life is moving towards. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you today for who you are. We love you, we thank you that you have given us the ability to take every thought captive. The enemy wants us to believe his lies. The enemy wants to bombard us with all kinds of thoughts. But you have given us your spirit so that we can manage our thoughts because they're powerful. We can manage our thoughts because it's in the mind that sin begins to be conceived. We can manage our thoughts because it's in the mind of where peace and contentment is produced. So we thank you today for who you are. We thank you, Jesus, that you do make life better and you make us better at life. And we praise you and we love you and we ask it in your name. Amen.
Thanks, Dwight, for another great message. Listen, it's through your generosity and God's faithfulness that we are able to bless others. And so if you would like to partner with us, there's four easy ways that you can do that. You can give online, you can download our mobile app, or you can text to give, and you can give at any of our physical locations. We'd love to see you there. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube to stay up to date on everything that's happening at New Point. It's been an amazing day. Have a great week, and we'll see you next weekend.